If you're looking to carry around a lot of bikes without taking up a lot of space, you might be interested in a hanging rack. And this hanging rack in particular has some special features to make it easier to do so. Hey everyone, it's Evangeline here at U Trailer, and today we'll be taking a look at a bike rack, which is the Thule Camber 4 Bike Hanging Rack. What sets this bike rack apart from other hanging racks is the cradle distance. So the cradles are set to seven inches apart, meaning there's more distance between your bikes, less likely to collide with each other. And also it makes it a little bit easier to load and unload those bikes. The cradles have this rubber padding on top to cushion your bike's frame, but also give it a bit of extra grip. Now that padding has these grooves inside for your brake cables and the cradle is an inch and three quarter inches wide. You also have this anti-sway cradle. So if your bikes fit there, it's going to help secure your bike by this third point and prevent sway side to side. Now this does depend on how well you're able to load your bikes up because of those different frame sizes. So like here, we weren't able to load up our bike, but on our last one, we were able to use that third attachment point, greatly reducing that sway. So you have attachment points for your frame, but you also need to know that your front wheels will still pivot since it's a hanging rack. That's where you get this cam buckle stabilizing strap to help decrease that pivot. So for your alternate frame bikes, like your kids' bikes or your women's frame, you may need to get a bike frame adapter bar in order to use your hanging rack properly and make sure that your levels look nice. So expect a little bit of trial and error just to get your four bikes of different shapes and sizes onto the rack. Don't forget to use that strap so you have as little pivot as possible. But now we're gonna take it onto our test course to see how it does. So here we are going down the hill and you can see a good amount of movement here as we go over these bumps, but everything is still staying steady due to straps on the bikes. We're making our quick and speedy turns here. So this is gonna be our slalom where we would try our U-turns and trying turning fast just to see that side to side swing. And now we're going over our speed bumps and we have that up and down movement. You can see there's a good amount of movement there because of the adapter in the hitch receiver. Now we have our alternating speed bumps. You can see the side to side action there. I do like how those anti sway cradles really limit the sway of the bikes. So you saw how it performed out on the test course and going down hills, everything still stayed where it should be. But just like with any other bike rack that has the anti rail bolt, just double check that every time you go for a ride. This has a weight capacity of 37 and a half pounds per bike, slightly more than most of your hanging rack capacities. Just remember when you do have this loaded up, try to have the heaviest ones as close to the vehicle as possible and your lightest bike racks towards the end of the arms. Also on capacities, make sure you have enough tongue weight capacity for this. If you have an inch and a quarter shank, make sure it's a class two inch shank. If you have a two inch like me, make sure you have enough tongue weight capacity for both the bike's rack weight of 34 pounds plus the weight of all your bikes. Because you have more distance between the bikes, you also have longer arms. So measuring from the center of your hitch pin hole to the end of the bike rack right over here, it's gonna be 43 and a quarter inches of length. This does not include the length of your last bike though, so just keep that in mind if you have not that much space in your garage. As with any bike rack, once you have your bikes on, you are gonna limit some view through your backup camera, but like my backup camera is offset, so I still have a little bit of view past the bikes and can see the ground around me. The distance between the arms is 13 inches outside cradle to outside cradle with the ability to pivot that third anti-sway cradle up. That makes it easier for you to take your bikes off or put them back on. The Thule Camber is a good looking bike rack. You have this sturdy design where it doesn't stick way too high up off your hitch. If your bikes are off, you might be able to still see through your rear window and depending on your backup camera situation, you might still be able to see through that. As long as the arms are, what if you're not planning on going out for a ride just yet? You can fold these arms down. Here at the back, we have this lever. You pull up on the lever and then this drops the arms down 
I like this design compared to some bike racks. It feels very sturdy as well as ergonomic or easy to use. Where the arms sit is perfectly aligned with the bottom lip of your hitch receiver. So if you're looking for ground clearance, just measure where your hitch receiver is to the ground and that's where your arms will sit from the ground. What if you need to grab your helmets or your waters real quick and they're inside your trunk or your hatch or your truck bed? You cannot tilt this away with the bikes on, so go ahead, take those bikes off. Then you have this lever here. Pull that lever, drop this down, you have a very good angle here, giving you all that space to open up your hatch. So make sure your arms are folded because of that very deep angle. You don't want them to hit the ground. When you bring this up, that lever is gonna snap into place and now you're ready to ride again. This has an inch and a quarter shank with an included two inch hitch receiver. You have an anti-rattle bolt on the side and that bolt is gonna use a three quarter inch wrench. There's one included I recommend picking up a socket wrench just to make it easier. Because of that shank design, it's awesome for your inch and a quarter class two hitches, but the adapter gives a little bit of extra movement. So side to side, awesome. You can see how the car is moving with the bike rack, but up and down, as you saw when we go, went over the speed bumps, we have a little bit of pivoting on that adapter. So after using this bike rack for a bit, I had my friend AJ come over to talk about the differences between different types of bike racks. So what are your other options for carrying around a lot of bikes without spending a lot of money? We have AJ here representing the... Hollywood Destination 4 Bike Rack. So you can carry four bikes with that rack as well as with the Thule Camber 4, but they do it differently. What type of bike rack do you have? I have a platform style bike rack myself. This one here is the same thing. I'm kind of used to that style versus the hang style. Sometimes it's easier to put it on there. Sometimes the center mass gets in the way. This one is easier because you can fold that down, set it in place, bring that up, and just attach it right here. It doesn't take a whole lot to get it set up. I don't have to go around the center arms like you kind of did on your hang Which side. can get very annoying once you're tired of riding and you have to get the bikes up on there, and if you have bikes of different shapes and sizes. The big pro for a platform rack is definitely going to be stability. AJ, would you do the honors of shaking the racks? Yep. So you can see the shake there on the Hollywood Racks Destination. Not much movement there. Not too much. Try it out with the hanging rack. A lot more movement, especially for the front wheels. Those can pivot a lot if you don't have them tightened down with cam straps. So other than that, what is the downside for a platform rack? It does take up a lot more space in your garage when you do take it out of your vehicle. You can only break it down so much, so you're gonna have to have space to store this if you don't leave it on the back of your car all the time. But it does stick out a little bit, so leaving it on the back of your car all the time can be a little bit of a pain if you're going into tight spots or you don't have that much room. True, and this is the most compact of the four bike platform racks that I've seen actually, so it doesn't take up that much space compared to the other four bike platform racks, which are even more. When you look at the both of the bikes right beside each other, our cars are pretty much aligned. The Thule Camber actually sticks out a little bit further than the Hollywood Racks Destination 4. So when you're parking in really tight spots or trying to get into your garage and close the door behind you, that could be something to think about too. You saw the different features of the Thule Camber, how it's designed, how it looks, how far the cradles are apart to make it easier for you to put the bikes together. Hopefully this will help you out with choosing between different types of hanging racks and that way you can decide what features do you want or need for your adventures. This is definitely great for if you want a hanging rack that has good distance to the ground so you can still see through your rear window and be able to carry around a lot of bikes but you also want something that's compact and easy to store into your garage. I still recommend taking a look at our platform rack options, but those are bigger, larger, and harder to store. So you have your pros, you have your cons, but hopefully you know what you want now. And if you wanna see how this looks on your specific vehicle, because it can be different, whether you have a hatch or a trunk or a big old truck, Check out our year make model test fits to see how it works on those cars. But this right here was our full review of the Thule Camber 4 bike hanging rack here at eTrailer. My name is Evangeline and I hope you enjoyed the journey.